All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started on what I would consider our biggest, possibly even our hardest motor control to date. Um, it's in reality, I guess it's really not that hard. It is really big. It's going to be about double the size of some of the other labs that we've done. And the reason it's, I can say it's going to be about double is because it's literally two motor controls. Um, the only common connection that they have is they're going to have a common e-stop. So let's go ahead and we're going to take this typical motor control and I'm just going to build onto it and I'm going to add these parts on. So that way you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, so we already know how to do this. Every, this will all makes sense to us hopefully by at this point. Um, right here we have our e-stop. And what we're going to do is we're going to go after the e-stop. We're going to go ahead and we're going to start putting in another rung or another drop down. To about right here okay it's going to come over and it's going to go into another stop switch so this stop switch will stop motor one so we're going to do let's do m1 stop and this will be m2 stop okay now before i get too far i wanted to talk a little bit about this e-stop now e-stops are um, are pretty crucial in all different types of machinery they need to kill the entire circuit not just a portion or a part they need to kill everything the whole machine has to stop okay so typically you're going to see the e-stop is going to be first and then everything's actually going to come after i know that we did a circuit i think with the permissions where we actually took a drop down around the e-stop and that's not very typical typically if your e-stop is pushed the lights, all that, it just, nothing works, okay? So get used to seeing it probably more after the e-stop than before it, all right? So, like I said, if we press this e-stop, it's gonna kill the circuit for both of these motor controls that we're building. The next thing we're gonna do in our, our second, our, our M2 um, rung, is we're gonna come in and we're just gonna have our start switch, just like so, and we'll just put M1 start, and then we're going to go over a little bit into another motor coil and this one we'll put M2 on. Man, I'm not very good at uh, doing my drawing today. We'll do M2 going into, we're not going to have an overload for this one, but it's so it's a little bit more simple. We are going to have our latching circuit. So it does have a auxiliary on the front of that motor coil and i'll show you that in a second and we'll do m2 aux all right so that's and that is pretty much the whole circuit that's all we're going to be doing today like i said if you press the e-stop there will be no power going to either one of these motor coils um if you were to just press the start for m man i'm not good with my numbering system today either for m2 it will turn on the M2 coil, which will cause the auxiliary here to close and then keep M2 running. They're totally independent. So meaning if I start, if I press the start button here, it's not gonna turn on this rung down here, it's gonna turn on the motor one, all right? If you did have the overload trip, it will only kill the first rung. You can have mo both motor, motor controls running at the same time, meaning you can have this one on and this one on if you wanted to. Um, this is a very this is very common to see multiple motor controls or mo multiple operating systems being on the same circuit with a common e stop. It may have there may even be like five e stops all in series over off to the side. That's and they might be spread out all throughout this uh, the line or let's say uh, the system area. I guess okay. So what I would like to do now is I'd like to jump over to my trainer and I'm going to show you how this thing how this thing should operate. Um, and if you guys have any questions after that, please come find me. All right, so let's go take a look at that. Okay, so I've got my whole circuit here so you can see it. Again, I uh, wanna remind you guys that we are putting in our transformer. We are wiring in a two amp breaker. We did do our distribution blocks, but this is how it works. So again, I put in my e-stop. If my e-stop is depressed, nothing is gonna run, or I guess it's just these two. Nothing happens if it is Open or on or closed, I'm sorry, if the contacts are closed on it, then I press one, motor one pulls in. If I hit the stop button for the, the motor one stop, it turns off. If I press the motor two, it's gonna pull in. If I hit the motor two stop, it's gonna stop it, all right? Now if I press the this one and this one, you can see that they are both turned on right now, okay? 
So that's pretty much how the circuit works. Make sure that, and again, if I hit my e-stop, it'll kill them both, all right? So make sure that you guys um, correctly put this together. Make sure you guys are still labeling or wire numbering all of your wires. Make sure that you're color coding correctly. And if you guys have any uh, problems, please come ask us for help. Also make sure in your video submission that you use all the buttons so that way I can see that it's working correctly. Make sure that I can see that the contacts are getting pulled in by these little um, uh, manual resets here and make sure I can see that your e-stop was, uh, was working too. So um, go ahead and get started. Good luck guys.